Hi, and welcome to your sixth iOS programming tutorial. And today, we are going to be looking at developing a very basic web browser. We'll look at loading a web page into a UI web view, as shown in the simulator here. We'll just load in a URL that we've set, in this case Google, but in part two of this tutorial, we will add a navigation URL search text field so the user can enter a URL, like you might find in the Safari application. By the end, we'll have it looking a bit like this, with back and forward buttons and an address bar. So, let's get started. Open up Xcode and create a new application. We're just going to create a single view application and click next. I'm going to call mine Web View Project, but you can call yours whatever you want. I'm using storyboards and iPhone, but again, you can do whatever you want there. Create the project and then go into your main storyboard.storyboard .storyboard file. Here, we're going to drag in a UI web view. For today, we're going to make the UI web view take up the whole screen, but in part two of this tutorial, we'll make it slightly smaller so we can fit a navigation bar on top. Scroll down through your objects panel on the right of your screen, and if you don't see it, have a look at the top right corner to make sure that the objects panel is selected. If it isn't, it will look something like this, and you'll just need to click on it to show it. The web view is in between the text field and the map view. It looks a bit like the Safari icon. So click on it and drag it into your screen. As soon as it enters your screen region, it should automatically set it to be full screen. So you just then move it around until it's right in the corners of each, so that the corners of the web view match up with the corners of your view. You'll notice it's got a few properties such as scaling, detection, and a few other things like mode and alpha, and things that you see in everything. So ignore all that stuff under the view menu, but have a look at what's different in a web view. So let's at first select scales pages to fit. This means that if a web page is really big, it'll just shrink it down so that it fits on the web view and the user can see the whole web page without having to scroll around. Of course, they can then zoom in if they wanted to. Let's also select multiple touch under view. That just means that users can use, for example, the pinch to zoom gesture within the UI web view. When it comes to detection, you can detect whatever you want. We'll leave it just as phone numbers, and that'll mean that if there's a phone number visible on the web page, the user will be able to click on that phone number and call the number directly. Now let's go into our assistant editor and make an outlet for the web view. We don't need any actions as we're just going to make the web page load as soon as the user loads the application. So drag it in between two curly brackets. You'll need to add them after the at interface line and select the connection outlet, type UI web view, storage strong, and we're just going to call it web view. Click connect, and then go into your main, uh, your view controller.m. I'm just going to go back to the single view editor, and then we need to start doing some code. You've never really used the view did load method before, but today we're going to. The view did load method is called when the application or this particular view opens. So as soon as this view is open, which in this case is when the application opens, anything, any code you put inside here will be run. So we're going to put the code to load the website into the web view in here. So that as soon as the user opens our view, which is the first view, so when they open the application, the website's there. So we first need to set this URL to load into the web view. So I have string, and we'll just call it URL string equals, and then at talking mark, talking mark, semicolon. I'll fill that in in a moment. Then type nsurl, and we'll call it url, equals, and then we're going to make, set the nsurl value to be the string. So nsurl, url with string, and then the name of our string, which we called url string. Then close the square brackets and add a semicolon. Then we need to set up an nsurl request, which pretty much just gets the data from the url. So just downloads the web page. nsurl request asterisk and we'll just call it request object or request obj for short equals nsurl request request with url and then the name of our url which we set to be url again close the square brackets and then we finally need to load the web page in this case the nsurl request into our web view so open with the square bracket and type web view load request and then the name of our nsurl request which is request object, or request obj. Close those square brackets and add a semicolon. 
So it's almost done, and all we need to do now is set the web page for it to load. We put this inside the talking marks in our first line of code, the ns string URL string. Make sure you do the full URL, so http colon forward slash forward slash www dot and then the name of your web page. I'll just load Google into the web browser, google.com. So let me zoom out and we'll run the application and see if it works. So click run and you shouldn't have any errors. If you do, go through your code and see where they may have occurred. And as you can see, the website will load into the web view. Let's go onto a website that isn't a mobile website, Google is. So for that reason, we can't actually test the pinch to zoom. So let's go into the 99 cents app development website. If we open it up, you'll see that in our web view, we'll be able to pinch to zoom. The first thing that will come to mind is how can you pinch to zoom when your Mac doesn't have a touch screen? All you need to do is hold down the Alt or the Option key and two circles will appear. If you then click, you can zoom in and out by dragging on the one circle that the cursor appears in, and the other cursor will pretty much act like the absolute symmetrical value of the first cursor. And in that way, you can zoom in and out like you would on a real device. Of course, if you have a real device, it's good to test a web view on that. So as you can see, we can zoom in and out, we can interact with the web page and go into other pages, and really do anything. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and in part two we're going to add a URL bar, or an address bar, or a search bar, whatever you want to call it, to the top of the screen, so that the user can enter the URL, rather than just setting one at the very beginning. If you've got any questions, comment on the video, message us, visit our Facebook page, or go to 99centsappdevelopment.com and get in touch with us on the Get In Touch page. All the links are in the description. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time for part two of this tutorial. Mm -hmm.